The Lord be with you. And also with you. Check, I'm switched on. I am switched on. I seem very quiet. Do I seem quiet to you? Can you hear me? Good. Welcome, everybody. Uh, there will be a coffee morning and plant sale to raise money for the flower fund at Sarah and John's Hall's home on the second, uh, uh, sorry, at Two Church Path on Saturday, April the 27th at 10 a.m. Please support and bring your friends. Plants and cuttings are needed. Please see Sarah. The next PCC meeting will be here in church at 7.30 on Thursday, April the 25th, and the APCM will be in church on 7.30 on Tuesday, May the 7th. The new Northmore website is now up and running. Just search for Northmore Team Ministry. The first phase of the work in the hall is now completed. We have new roof insulation, a new ceiling and new ceiling lights. Funds permitting work on phase two will start on July the 29th. I have some bands of marriage to read. published advance of marriage between Samuel David Jonathan Cope of this parish and Sophie Frederica Littlewood Horner, also of this parish, also between Paul James Hookway of this parish and Emily Elizabeth Burgoyne, also of this parish. If any of you know cause or just impediment why these persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it, and this is for the second time. We're going to begin our worship today with hymn number 20, number 20. Easter declaration. 
Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The risen Christ came and st stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And also with you. Alleluia. The handshake. Let's offer one another a sign of Confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. We say together. Merciful Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have done. Help us to live in the and our own fishing. That we may do justice, love us, and walk by way. God, who is both power and love, forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand as we say the glory to them. Glory to God in our hearts and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we, we worship, worship you, you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the you alone are the most high Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Collect for the third Sunday of Easter. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladden the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen Lord. And serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please sit for the first one. For we 
shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. But you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins, and in him is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We have a gospel to proclaim, number 182.
to St. Luke, chapter 24, beginning at verse 36. Glory to you, Lord. While they were talking to each other, Jesus himself stood among them and said, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking that they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they stood there, still did not believe it, because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled. That is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I'm going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Heavenly Father, please grant me words to speak, and us all ears to hear, for your name's sake. Amen. Please be seated. Understand that the is this working now? No, nothing's working. No, nothing's working. Yeah, nothing's working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing's working. It nothing's was working at one stage. It's switched on, but it's nothing's happening. Yeah. Okay. We just you've got it all slid up to the right place. <laughs> <laughs> One of the unfortunate victims will have a heart failure, 
necessitating the use of those metal pads that look for all the world like steam irons, which administer <laughs> electric shocks with very good degrees of success. And sometimes the lines on the monitor stay flat, and sometimes there's a little bleep and the pulse stops again, whereupon this huge relief, everything's fine, and all the doctors start peeling off their gloves and uh, asking each other what they're doing for dinner that evening. What would the melodrama do without the storyline of the person who dies and is brought back to life? Ah, you're thinking, that's the connection with Easter. That's the resurrection. There you go. Except that, I want to say, that isn't what the resurrection is about. Christians believe that the resurrection is far more than a resuscitation. This is not about somebody who died and was, was revived in some way so that he walked about for a bit and then died again. The Christian faith is not based on a resuscitation but on a resurrection. The fulfilment of all that had gone before, the sign of all that is to come. If you're an American, it is possible, and you're rich, it is possible to have your body frozen in carbon ice when you die. Or if you're not quite so rich, just your head. In the hope that one day, people will discover a cure for what you died from and will restore you to life again. If one day, if one day that became possible, it would, I suppose you could say, be miraculous. But it would not be like the resurrection of Jesus which Christians believe was of a different order altogether. After his resurrection, Jesus was in some ways the same as he was before. He was anxious to demonstrate that he was not a ghost or a vision, that he was solid, that he could eat and drink, touch and be touched. But he was also different. On several occasions, those who met him didn't immediately recognise him. He appeared and disappeared. He seemed to be able to be in two places at the same time. His body bore the wounds of the crucifixion, but it wasn't the same old body that it had been before. And nor was it a survival. If you can imagine, uh, perhaps, a different Easter story where the women on the first Easter morning go to the tomb, they find the stone is still across the tomb, but the soldiers are still there. They persuade the soldiers to roll back the stone. They go in, there's the body of Jesus. They anoint his body, the stone is rolled back across the entrance. And they go away. But, later in the day, or next week or wherever, people start seeing Jesus. And they have visions of him. He speaks to them. They, they have a, they're absolutely sure that he's alive. His body may be in the tomb, mouldering away like John Brown's body, but his spirit goes marching on. The Christian faith could have perhaps survived the story, the death of Jesus, with that, with, that sort of, uh, with that sort of story. But the Gospel writers are very keen to dismiss that. As we heard in the uh, the Gospel reading just now, Jesus, when he appears, dismisses the idea that he might be a vision or a ghost. Have you got something to eat, he says. See, ghosts don't eat like I do. Christians believe that the resurrection of Jesus is a glimpse of the end of history in the middle of history. The fact that Jesus died and rose again gives us courage to believe in the power of God to raise the dead. And to believe that when our turn comes, that will not be the end for us either. We believe that we will be born into new life, not the resuscitation of these tired old bodies with all their frailties and limitations, not some sort of survival of our inner spirit, but part of a new order. It may be that like Jesus we will carry the marks of our present existence, and we're not most certainly still be us, but it will be a resurrection, not a resuscitation or a survival. For Jews and for Christians, 
Being physical is essential to who we are. Adam was formed from the dust of the earth, and the consequence of his sin was that to dust he would return. C.S. Lewis in The Great Divorce, if you've never read The Great Divorce, I highly recommend it. It's a wonderful, wonderful book. But he imagines hell as a place where everything is sort of um, uh, misty and not very, I can't think of the opposite. What's the opposite of solid? Insubstantial. Insubstantial, good idea. <laughs> <Never heard. laughs> Misty and insubstantial, whereas heaven, because the, the people, people in his imagination, people go on a bus trip from hell to heaven, and when they get to heaven, they find everything is solid, extraordinarily solid, so that the grass hurts their feet. So Paul, deal, so Paul deals with this at some length in 1 Corinthians 15, and it's well worth studying if what I'm saying today interests you. He compares the death of our bodies to the planting of a seed. No one could guess, he says, from looking at the seed, what kind of plant would grow from it. But God gives it a body as he has chosen. And so it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable, what is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonour, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. What gives us the courage to believe that this might be so? The resurrection of Jesus. His resurrection shows us that God has the power to raise the dead. If Jesus can be raised, then we can be raised as well. The disciples fully believed that the crucifixion was the end of the story. All they hoped for, all they trusted in, had been destroyed, and they were left frightened, <coughs> disillusioned, and doubting. And even when they saw Jesus or heard reports that he was alive, they didn't believe him straight away. And yet, here we are, 2,000 years later, talking about something which happened all those years ago on the other side of the world. And in itself, that is the best evidence that the story is true. Undoubtedly, undoubtedly, something happened, which turned that little bunch of frightened, defeated nobodies into a force to turn the world upside down. Something happened which meant that they were willing to go to the cross themselves in order to make it known. And the Bible is in no doubt that the thing that happened was the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. It wasn't an idea, it wasn't a resuscitation or a survival. It was a resurrection. They saw Jesus again, but not as he had been before. They saw him again in a way that enabled them to believe that he was the Lord of life. And the reason that we've heard about Jesus and his resurrection is that that experience changed. <laughs> when we die, sisters, it will be as if our immortality is swallowed up, that's the phrase he uses, by immortality. Who we are will not be lost but will be expressed in a different way. Just as the seed and the plant are different, yet one follows on from the other. We can't hope to fully understand this. We hardly dare to hope believing. But we can look to Jesus, who died and rose again, as our pattern and our guarantee. On the night before he died, Jesus told his disciples that he was going away that he would prepare a place for them and then return to take them with him so that where he was, they might be too. And he told them that they knew the way to the place where he was going. And as you know, Thomas objected. Lord, he said, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? I am the way, said Jesus, the truth and the life. If you say those words in isolation, they sound like a sort of grandiose statement, but actually I think they're words of reassurance. You do know the way, he says, because you know me. We can't hope to understand everything. We can't hope to do more than catch a glimpse of the wonder that awaits us. But we can trust Jesus, who walked, talked, healed, and died on the cross, and three days later rose again. He is our sign 
and our guarantee that this life is no more than a doorway to what awaits us. I'm going to end with some wonderful words of St. Paul. He says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call in Christ Jesus. May God bless this word to us. Amen. So we turn to page 22 of the service books and stand to say the creed together. We believe in one and one, the Father and the Almighty, maker of our and love, of all that has seen and has seen. We believe in one and one, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God of from God, light from light.
Gaza, that hugely painful forgotten one in Sudan. And now this escalation of risk in the whole Middle East. We look on in horror at the suffering, but give us generous hearts to reach out to all who are trying to bring relief. Your spirit is at work in all the medical and food aid which is being provided. May we be part of that in both gifts and prayers. Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Here in Oakhampton, Christian work is going on on behalf of the children in our local schools, especially in St. James, our CME school, and in the active groups of Brick Church and Who Let the Dads Out. Let us think of them and now ask God to bless their work and give them strength and encouragement to carry on and develop. Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. We pray for all those we know who are sick or suffering, especially those with depression weariness. World and national news and lack of income bring people down in spirit. Lord, give them hope and let them see the light at the end of their dark times. May the light of the risen Christ shine brightly in their lives. Lord of life, in your mercy, no person is an island, so we pray for all those who grieve loss. May your love surround and console them through our actions for them. Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour. I'd like to welcome anyone who's here for the first time today. It's great to have you with us. We do hope that you can stay for some uh, refreshments after the service. So we're going to sing an Easter hymn now, it's number 130, the day of resurrection.
The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine are poured, may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins. Do this often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O Ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Would you please sit your meal for the Lord's room? Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Saviour taught us. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth and as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Hallelujah. Let us keep peace. Praise God, for the Lord our Almighty God is He. Happy are those who have been invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Then in God your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may see him in all his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns with you, now and forever. Amen. Top of page 27. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Those who live in him shall never die. Hallelujah. God of truth. We have, have seen with our eyes, and touched with our hands, the bread of life. Strengthen our faith, that, that we may grow in love for you and for each other. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our final song is on 286.
all that this coming week holds. Things that we're looking forward to. Things that concern us. We trust them into God's care. Peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Amen. Thank you.